Chinese restaurant on Fordham and University. Male Oriental uh, appeared to be shot numerous times. Yo, homie, homie, you want to get out of the way, man? Back up, please. Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. On tape, various angles of the restaurant with police activity. Uh, tight shot of the victim's face inside the bus while the EMS personnel are working on it. And that's about it. And let me know of anything else. All right. Did you go to the Fifth Avenue? Yeah. All right. I'll check that out too. All righty. I listen to the radios. It's a special talent, if I may say so. Um, in the sense whereby what I hear, I am actually disregarding it until I hear keywords, you know, um, that would trigger my attention, like uh, homicide, um, dead in the fire, you know, key things like that. And then I can hone in on that particular frequency or wherever it's coming from to gain more information and totally lock out everything else. There are some things that he will hear better than I will because he'll be in the given area. You know, um, hey, I'm sitting here trying to listen to the entire city where he can be more selective and concentrate on an area that he's going to be in at that particular moment. You got somebody under a train on 23rd Street. Yeah. And on Brooklyn, there was numerous shots fired at a building. I don't know if anybody was shot or anything. I'm just listening. I'm trying to decide where to go first. We disagree on a lot of stories, you know? And um, it's just our general means. You know, he looks at things from a camera angle, and I look at it from trying what, what I think to be a news story, you know? He sees great pictures, but his great picture's not always a news story. So we disagree a lot on what is and what is not. So we, we compromise, you know? We shoot it, he'll shoot it, and I'll write it up as best I possibly can. We'll give it to the stations, and hopefully it will turn out to be something. There's always the possibility that the person could have been pushed in front of the train, which then, in fact, would make it a much better story. But uh, right now, from my experience, I'm going to have to go to the shooting, which I think I have a better shot with. If somebody like Donald Trump decided to commit suicide, then it'll be a major story. But if a homeless person uh, just got tired of uh, being out on the street and jump in front of a train, then it wouldn't be that of a uh, news item, especially here in New York. Uh, you might hear something and you don't want to take a ride because it's too far away, but that might be uh, that might be the story of the night. You know where the police is at? They're inside the building? Did anybody get shot? How many people? Two people? Were they young guys or old guys? I know it was a girl and a man. Oh, it was a girl? Young or old? She was young. When you say young, how old? She was like, say, maybe 18, 17, 18. 17, 18? She shot bad or? I don't know. Where were they shot? Right in front of the boat? Yeah, they were standing right there at the door. Right here? Yeah, let me go. Let me go. You know, he's under pressure to get there and get the story, and I've got to sell that tape, you know? Um, I've seen a lot of cases whereby the TV stations will look at it as just being a homicide or a shooting or a fire or whatever, and I've got, I've got to try and find that one little niche, a twist that's going to make it something that 
raise that eyebrow and say, well, maybe it does have potential, you know? Uh, I have to do that, otherwise, you know, we won't be, uh, won't be making any money. I'm getting various accounts as to who was shot. I'm hearing that it might have been two males and a female. I don't know what condition they're in, but uh, there's a lot of blood inside the building. If, if it was a child that was shot here, then it's a good story. You know, uh, again, it's, I don't make the rules. I just shoot it, and hopefully uh, when we sort it all out, it might be something you know, that could be used on the news. The chances of somebody that's hanging around these streets that's 20 years old, making it to 30 years old, very slim. As you see, the, the drug problem is a major problem here in, in New York. A lot of the young people are getting involved with it. You can make $1,000 a day, and it's tax-free. The only problem with that is, if the police don't get you, Another drug dealer might get you. The users might get you. If the users don't get you, the people that are out here ripping other people off will get you. But do you starve, or do you make $1,000 a day and live, live where the bank executives live? It's cut and dry, especially to the mind of, of someone that's young. Danny. What the? As long as I've been working, it seems like there's one story that's going to make the news each night. The thing is, you got to find it. Video photo news. Yeah, we have four stories from the overnight. Right, like to check it, you know, check in with you, see how they look to you. It's cheaper for the networks to buy spot news than maintaining a full staff on an overnight basis. So it's really it's really their ball game. You know, it just plays. Video news. He's a clean All guy. All right, very good, very good. Uh, three person shot in the drive-by shooting, Rochester Avenue, St. Mark's Avenue. Leon Tate is uh, shots fired through the window. Numerous sh uh, shell casings on the ground, blood stains on the street. All right, police are not really sure what the circumstances are right now, but they don't believe it was a drug related or a gang related shooting. All right, hold on, one more time. News. <laughs> just keeps on rising. Last year, we had over 2,000 homicides here in New York City. That's an average of five or six homicides a day. Seven people were burned this morning too seriously in a rooming house fire in Union City, New Jersey. The blaze broke out just after midnight at the Alberti Hotel. Hudson County arson investigators were at the scene, but there's no word yet on the cause of that blaze. 
It's essential to a television story to have pictures. It's what we do here. We take uh, the printed word and uh, we turn it into television. A map that can give me Tel Aviv and a map that can give me Dharan, Saudi Arabia. Hey, Joe. There are six broadcast stations, so it's a very highly competitive atmosphere here. Take the wood, yeah, the early Bush bike. We live and die on ratings. They decide the budget of the stations and how successful the station is, and that filters down to uh, our resources and what we can do. Thank you, Dan. And the nation they're concerned about is... We know that there are certain ongoing daily issues that must get into the program. Then you have the stories that do pop up every day, the disasters, spot news stories that weren't predictable, that just happened, a subway crash or an explosion, something like that, a murder. The problem is with six or seven homicides a day, we don't know which ones to cover and which ones not to. That's our dilemma, really. Opening on one. On one, and then to three. The only censorship is our own good judgment. There's no government uh, censorship. We can really show uh, anything we want. Uh, of course, we understand that these pictures are going to people's homes, and we are sensitive to what you uh, would want to broadcast into someone's living room. This is the News at 10. And good evening and welcome, everyone. I'm Sheila Stainback. And I'm Arvin Scott. You've been watching incredible... What do you got? What do you got? What do you got? Well, I'm rushing. Tell them to slow down, man. Don't, don't, those are your boys. Tell them to take it easy. Wait there for me. Wait there for me. Uh, you guys are too quick for me. You, you guys are too fast, huh? We came from Mount Sinai. Where were you? I was in, uh, in Brooklyn. You went to Queens. Let me make a quick shot. Can I get a quick shot? Oh, wait. You need the key. Wait. Thank you, boss. Nah, I think the boss should chill out. No, I don't. No, you can cover his face. I don't. You can just put the. No, cover his face. Thank you. Could you put your top lights on for a second? I heard that somebody said they had the guy had handcuffs. Yeah, yeah. handcuffs. Yeah, handcuffs hand on. Yeah, handcuffs he was handcuffed behind his back. Yeah. How many times did he shot? You know? I don't know. It looked like numerous times. times. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Where's he shot? On the head, head. The head and face. Was it, it looks like a male Hispanic? Or? Uh, male, white, look Italian. Really? Yeah. I figured it was a mob hit over here. I mean, that's what area. Yeah. And this is in a white neighborhood. So yeah. That's why, you know, what I figured that point. Anything new? That's it, except for the uh, shootings on 134th Street. A male white was uh, shot in the car by a male black on 134 in St. Anne's. And now they found a male black shot to death a few blocks down on 134 in Walnut. That's so, going on now? Yeah, yep. they, they think it's connected. The bodies are still there? The body, well, the, the guy in the car was rushed to Lincoln. The body of the male black at Walnut just the, at 134 should be just, still just, there. Okay, I'm going to take a ride. Cool. Okay. Yeah. All right, if you got anything else, Larry, let me know. Okay. Larry, I'll call a post and tell him you're coming down there. All right. All right. TC will tip me on jobs, or I'll tip him on jobs that we hear. And I go and shoot stills. Uh, I, I shoot for the New York Post. These are some of the calls that I've had. Uh, uh, this here is a woman that uh, that was killed on a major Deegan Highway when a tractor trailer struck and killed her and dragged her from uh, dragged her several blocks along the highway. You can see the body is badly mangled and dismembered. This is a young man that was shot uh, in the South Bronx on 138 in Cyprus uh, back uh, several years ago. This young man was hit by a train while under the influence of angel dust, a drug, uh, a hallucinogen drug that uh, alters the mind, and he stepped in front of a Metro North train and killed him. He was hit by a train, he was shot, and he jumped off the roof of a building after raping a girl. These are some other photos. A woman that was uh, mummified. This guy here was killed in his bathroom. 
this guy here was uh, hit by a train also. I've, I've, I've seen it all. These photos do not get published. They are of my private collection uh, that I've accumulated over the years. If you got a weak stomach or, or you feel sorry for a lot of things, then you shouldn't be doing this type of work. I mean, you pull up on some of these scenes and what you see, what you see is incredible. I mean, it's, it's not that you're, you, know, you did anything, it's just when you go to these things and you, what you see there, it's so violent that uh, yeah, so, sometimes you even wonder you know, why you do this. But, you know. One to the desk, one to the desk, Danny. On tape, we got uh, a shot of the body inside the, the ambulance, one male white, handcuffed, uh, some blood stains, uh, four or five second car on the scene, and uh, minimal police activity. 98 from that location. How's it going? Flash working or right? Nah, flash got transferred. Huh? Yeah, about that shit, 134 on uh, St. Anne's? No. No, white guy got shot in the car. Guy just put down a nice picture the other day. They had a uh, girl was walking a German Shepherd. The kids came up with a Uzi. They just turned the dog into Chappie. The they, did, they did the dog yeah. in? Yeah. Where, where, where was this at? This is, yeah, right on my way to that. Just keep getting better over here, huh? Yeah. All right, you guys take care. Cool, man. Have a safe tour. Right. By the amount of blood that's here, it don't look like you got shot here. Oh, you know what that is? That's a homemade crack thing. It's a yeah, straw it's and yeah, aluminum foil. Yeah. Officer Wiener, how you doing? Danny Johnson. Yeah. Can you give me anything on this, uh... Yeah? Oh, Q-U-A-N. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, but hold on. The deceased man is, is the store's owner. Oh, he's critical. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. All right. Okay, by the way, what, what part of the body? Shot in the head. All righty. You, you got you to gotta train your mind to, to, you know, in a way, in a fashion that you're on a mission. And you do your mission, and, and, and you go home, and you try to forget about what you did. A lot of times that doesn't work, though. You know, uh, uh, little things stay in your mind, uh, particularly when something happens to a child or something. Me being a father myself, I'm always worried about, you know, my children. I mean, it gets to a point where they even make it, they're making bulletproof clothing for children. Which, which is sad. Uh, the male shot in the head in the Sunset Park section of Brooklyn. Uh, the male is critical at um, Wycoff Hospital. We'll give it a look. All right. What color was the car? It was white, they told me. Yeah? Yeah. They killed the guy, yeah? Yeah, they told me that. Okay. Yeah, it was white. Yeah, they told me that. Yeah, they told me that. Okay. Thank you. It appears to be a homicide of a gypsy cab driver. It's a guy that would hire his car for people on the street. And they don't make much money. Maybe maybe they'll make $60, $70 in a night. And then, uh, the, you know, too many of them wind up like this, dead for nothing, I mean, for a few dollars. And it's a shame. A lot of the TV stations in New York City 
uh, like the big networks, ABC, NBC, they won't air something like this because yeah, it's too local and common. Yeah, but the Spanish stations that I deal with, which I have a contract with, they will air something like this because these are these are people that are getting killed in their communities. A lot of times you get trends, and we've had several of the youths shot for their clothing, literally the clothing on their back. Um, they're very popular right now with something called an eight ball jacket. It's basically a leather jacket, waist length, uh, multicolored, large multicolored patches with what looks like the cue ball uh, the, uh, um, of the number eight. And uh, just incredibly popular. I imagine the jacket's probably going for two, three, four hundred dollars. And um, the youths have been shooting each other, stabbing, whatnot, for possession of these jackets. And uh, earlier this evening, we had taken care of one such case where a um, 16 year old male was shot in the back for his jacket. Um, the shooter didn't get the jacket. The guy was still wearing it when he went to the hospital. Um, subsequently, he was pronounced DOA. Yeah, I'll tell you, I can't imagine New York a place without guns. They've been here ever since I can remember, and as far as I can see down the road, they'll never get rid of them. The best thing going for us is that these people don't know how to use these weapons. You know, they're not trained to, to shoot these weapons. If they were, we'd have a whole lot more deaths than we have now. Entering an area known as Hunts Point. It's located in the South Bronx. It's one of the boroughs of New York City. Uh, I grew up uh, in this area. A lot of my friends never made it out of here. Some of us did and went on to be uh, professional people. But uh, it takes a lot of heart to do that when you're growing up in a place where you don't have a chance to begin with. I spent my whole life trying to get out of here and I always wind up back here the news in this area. I was at a job. I come over as a, a man with a gun holding some people in the hallway. At the scene, I was caught right in the middle of a, a wild gunfight. Yes. I thought I was shot because the bullets were hitting the uh, wooden structure that I was leaning against and pieces of wood were chipping on, hit me on my forehead. And with the sweat and the noise that the gunfire was making, I thought I was actually shot. And I was yelling that while I was taping the scene. <laughs> want to die there. I mean, I just, you know, it, it was like, oh, God, I worked so hard to, to get away from all this, and I'm going to, you know, this is where it's going to end, right here, right where I started. I'm a survivor from the streets. I mean, my father died in a fire, and they dragged him out into the street. I lost my sister in the streets, victim to uh, drugs. So now, in a way, it's time for these streets to give me something back. Come on. It's over, it's over. No. There's been 
sometimes where the phone is rang, believe it or not, seriously, the phone is rang and there's some food here, and I would grab something and, and just and just run yeah. out the door. <laughs> and she'd be throwing something at me as I'm leaving, <laughs> for leaving. Or having a conversation throughout the whole meal on the phone. <laughs> That's true also. If, if you look at my phone, come here for a second, I want to show you something. Yeah. Look at my telephone. If you zoom in to here, you can get all the phone numbers to the TV stations. They might call me up right now and say, listen, there's something going on at Kennedy Airport. Could you get over there right away? And I'm like, well, I'm eating. And they go, really? We really would appreciate it. But because I do business with them all, all day long, then I have to, uh, I have to make uh, certain arrangements. So next week they play the 49ers. Okay, ready? Maybe we will. Bless your hand, Through thy bounty, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, dig in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> Extra okay. sauce, please. <laughs> Extra sauce. <laughs> Help yourself, buddy. <laughs> 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 One piece of bread, bread. What he sees out there does bother him. Sometimes I think more than he realizes. But, uh... If he has to go in, like, on a Friday or a Saturday, I would go. And, and, the, and the protest. But I'd and wind the up going. I oh, would she, she always wind up going. has a way of winning, but... He doesn't care for me to be riding with him. He don't want me in certain neighborhoods. I happen to like it. It gets my blood going, and in what aspects? Is it exciting? I really can't pinpoint it. I just, I enjoy it. I enjoy my blood pumping and my heart racing as he's driving. And some people like danger, I guess, to some extent, I'm one of them. <clears throat> it's a very touchy subject. And it is war. It is officially war. Operation Desert Storm. Officially at 7 o'clock, although apparently bombers have taken off from Saudi Arabia before that time. Well, what's going on now? There's a world, the world is paying attention to the situation in Iraq, and New York being one of the biggest cities in, in the world, uh, all the TV stations here are doing the same thing. So it's going to be pretty difficult for me to try to sell some news uh, tonight. Apparently it's not a bomb, it's some type of package. And that's about it. It might be good for me because uh, being that the city's so jumpy, I already shot one bomb scare at uh, Kennedy Airport and this one. So this might, you know, they might put a package together, you know, uh, signifying how intense the situation is out here with what's going on on the other side of the world. So I might be able to do something with this. Right now we're in the Bronx. I'm pulling up towards uh, where the crime scene unit responds out of. The crime scene unit is a forensic uh, team which goes out and searches for evidence, fingerprints. You can tell how the mood of the city is going just by seeing how many vehicles are here. There's about three vehicles missing, three to four vehicles missing. It's a relatively quiet night. And some nights you come over here and there's only one vehicle here. What are you doing here? It's a quiet night tonight. <laughs> so we luck up and see him going on a job or something. We can follow him. Yeah. Anything happening? Did you score with that job last night? I don't I don't know. I didn't see the news. Uh-huh. I don't, you know, I don't count. <laughs> yeah. Did you make the other homicide on one three four I told you about? Yeah, I went I just made the body being put in the bus. Uh any of the papers take any of your pictures? Huh? Any of the newspapers take any of your pictures? What? Take any of the newspapers pick Oh, up no, I don't know yet. The Post, I gave it into the Post. Yeah. Jose scored with Newsday on the uh, perp walk of that elderly gentleman yeah. that pushed his wife out. Yeah. Good. The, po the Post didn't do nothing with it. They didn't even have a story on it. Yeah. Oh, very good.
Alright, anyway, I'm calling you about the 7-8 precinct. Yeah, I received your slip here saying a male shot. years old? Yeah. One shot? Looks, looks like, like that way, yeah. yeah. Right square in the center, chest. Ooh, that hurts. All right, so he's just laying there in the hallway, yeah? Yeah. What floor? Second, Second floor? Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot, guy. As far as news is concerned, this doesn't have a slim chance of making the air because of the neighborhood that it's in. Out of here, I heard they put him in the A3. Flash is in Brooklyn. There you go. There you go. Before I did this, I used to drive a tow truck. They used to call them chasers. You had to respond to the scene of an accident, and whoever got there first got the wreck. And now I respond then to all different types of situations. No te cojones conmigo que yo te quiero mucho, carajo. ¿Cómo está usted? I don't feel that I'm exploiting anybody more than I'm trying to help. I have turned my camera off because I've seen somebody get so emotional where they start crying and throwing food on the floor. I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna stick the camera in somebody's face like that. Uh, I go to, I go to scenes and I don't, I don't uh, excessively shoot unnecessary footage that has no purpose other than to show how how bad the situation is. I mean, when I shoot a scene, I, I shoot it with a lot of respect, I feel. because it's directly related to what took place in Iraq. These people are protesting the fact that the United States went in and did what they did. And this is a result of, uh, as a demonstration that was going on. But there was also some reports that uh, when the police got there, there was a lot of confusion, a lot of pushing and shoving. And uh, one of the demonstrators might have, might have fallen or been pushed accidentally over the bridge. Get the camera out of here. 
Yeah. I got people laying all over the roadway. Okay. I'm on the way back. Uh, you've got the networks, I guess, right? Okay. Danny, what do we got? Who wants this? Um, ABC Network, CBS Network, CNN. <laughs> it's gonna go worldwide. Home run. Uh, stuff like this is kind of like uh, an airplane crash. Whatever anybody can get, they'll take. What makes it good for us is that most of the people that are taking this are gonna pay for it whether they use it or not. And uh, this is what's gonna make our week for us. Going up to CNN. CNN. How you doing? Uh, you can take from the Brooklyn Bridge. All the yeah. people got to get. They got hit in the demonstration. Okay, thanks. You want to help me for a second? Yeah. Coming down. Twenty. They're going right. They're going uh, with that right away. Uh, I don't know. It's a pretty Let's messy scene there. Yeah? They got bodies all over the highway there. Oh, you do? There was, a, there was like seven people struck. Really? Two of them looked like they were in critical condition. I mean, this guy just plowed into the whole crowd. Okay, thanks. Okay. Yeah, this is a tape of uh, seven people that were hit by a car. There was 200 demonstrators on the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh-oh. And a car plowed into them. Hit seven people, knocked them all over the bridge. Killing them? Uh, some people in serious condition. Yo! Hey, the hoe! Yo! All right, the hoe! What's up? What's going on? What's going on, man? Seven people got run over on the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah, I'm on the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah, how many? About seven people. Oh, man. Am I dead or what? I don't know. They're pretty bad. All right. Oh, they were, they were demonstrating. Oh, man. Go ahead, guys. Go ahead. 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 Go ahead.